Rain, my density has brought me to you. What? Oh, what I meant to say was... Wait a minute. Don't I know you from somewhere? Yes. Yes. I'm George. George McFly. I'm your density. I mean... And that's cute. That's from Back to the Future. And have you ever been in a situation where you've been told what to say, I'm your destiny, and it's not coming from the heart. It's not coming from you. So it sounds gawky, awkward, and insincere. So if you're put in that situation ever, just set that aside. Set aside the script and just say, what is it I want to say? What is it that I want to say from my own heart? I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner. I'm a clinical psychologist, and you're listening to The Rational Basis of Happiness. You can pick up the phone right now and call me with any question you would ask a counselor or a therapist. My number's toll-free, one 877 drkenner And right before the break, I was answering one of our after-hours calls. And this was from Marissa, who works with a man that she's also dating. So it's a very stressful situation. She can't come home at the end of a day of work and tell her husband, I can't believe what the boss did today. Or she can't go into work and say to her colleagues, "Um, what do you think of the boss? Or you wouldn't believe what happened with my husband. It's not her husband, it's her boyfriend. What my boyfriend did today. She can't do that. So I think that what you need, Marissa, is better assertiveness skills. Yeah, you you can learn better skills to aid your memory. But I think the key skills are your ability to be your own best friend, to support yourself in this situation. And if you've never had a listening comprehension problem, in quotes, with other people, why with this guy? Are you resisting him? Are you rebelling? Is it because of his manner? Is he very critical of you? Most of us tend to resist people who are critical. We don't want to do something for someone who's unappreciative or who's someone who, to someone who doesn't see our perspective or who overloads us. It sounds like you're a, a real decent person. I wouldn't come down on yourself in terms of, wouldn't come down on yourself at all. If you want to do anything, I would strengthen your ability to speak to this boyfriend boss and tell him that this situation isn't working out. And you do, you want it to be a nurturing relationship. And if he says, well, I'm only telling you that you need to get some skills for your own good, it that feels like you're in a one-down situation, like you're a parent, and you don't want to set yourself up that way. Um, you don't want to feel visible for negative attention. So you can ask yourself, who does he remind you of? Does he remind you of your dad? Did you have a critical parent? And it's such familiar territory. And you also need the income to live, and you don't know how to disentangle yourself, so you stay with him. I would go back to the drawing board and take a hard look at the relationship at work. What other, come up with a contingency plan for work. Where else could you work? You could try working someplace else and see if the relationship becomes any better. If you already know you want out of the relationship, then you don't have to spend the time doing that. If you think he's a great guy and you want in the relationship, but it just doesn't work as a marriage, not as a marriage, but as a boyfriend, girlfriend situation, then you want to address that directly. Um, rather than make it your problem and put yourself in the one down situation. I work with my husband uh, and and I also have I uh, have my own practice on the side but in radio I work with my husband and there have been times when I felt resistant when he will tell me what to do and we have to talk those times out and he's learned wonderful ways to communicate with me and I am so so appreciative of that. And right now your calls take priority so we're going to set aside the nine year old child and go to the phones right now and speak with Linnell. Linnell, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. Tell, tell me what your question is. Well, my question is, how can you tell if a guy still likes you? Because I think this guy that I used to date still likes me, but I can never tell. Okay. How old are you? Um, Ballpark. I, what? Ballpark. Uh, between, I'm in the teens. Okay, you're a teenager. Yes. And is this one of your first loves? One of your first relationships? Uh, actually, it, it was my second boyfriend. Your second boyfriend. The first question I have is, are you still interested in him? Yes, I am, very much. Okay, what do you love about him? Oh, I I love his personality. He can make me laugh, and 
when he smiles, he just makes me feel really good inside. So. Okay. What does he see in you? How do you feel about yourself when you're with him? Oh, when I'm with him, I just, I feel like I'm lighter than air and he just, he makes me feel really good when I'm around him. Okay. Do you feel competent? Do you feel worthy? Do you feel like you could take on new challenges in life? Yes, I do. Okay. What broke up the relationship then? Actually, to tell you the truth, I'm not entirely sure. He just broke up with me out of the blue one day and he didn't really give me the real, uh, he didn't really give me a explanation. Okay. And what conclusion did you draw? I just thought that maybe he was into someone else. Okay. That's exactly what came into my mind. (laughs) If you're in your teens, that happens all the time. So uh, he, he's into someone else. Did that have you, are you in the same circles? Do you go to school with him? Oh, yes, I do. Is he in your class? Yes, he's in one of my classes. Do you have any clues as to who someone else might be, if that's the case? Well, actually, he's dating another girl, but he told me that he hadn't had anyone lined up right after me. That's what he told me. Okay. Okay, that's what we all say. Why? Not all of us, but most of us. Because we don't want to hurt the person's feelings, right? Yes. Do you think that's a possibility that his eye was roving and he saw other women that he would be interested dating or a special woman and that he didn't want to hurt your feelings because he thinks you're a really nice person? I guess that would be it. Okay. Any other things that come to your mind that I haven't addressed? No, not really. Okay. How when he broke things off, one of the worst things you can do when you break when you break up a relationship is to not give your partner any understanding as to what's going on. He put you in that situation, which, you know, it sounds like it's an error. He hasn't had a lot of experience dating. He's not calling up in his forties. You're you're not calling up saying that you're in your forties and dating, you know, with a lot of experience behind you. Did you beat up on yourself? Did you start to blame yourself? Maybe something's wrong with me? Yes, I did. I started to ask myself questions, and I started to say, well, maybe if I would have done this, maybe if I would have done that, stuff like that. Was there anything that you think is legitimate, that maybe you were ignoring him, or maybe um, maybe you, you it, the illegitimate things, the things that I wouldn't do, is if he said that he wanted to go to bed with, I had a boyfriend when I was uh, younger, who liked me very much, but I wouldn't sleep with him. And so he went around to find girls he could sleep with. And I'm real proud of that to this day, that I just didn't give in and feel like I had to sleep with him. Is that the case with you at all? No, actually, I didn't think that was it. I mean, he's not like that, but I would never give myself in either. Oh, good. Good for you. Okay. Now, you said you think he's flirting with you. Give me, what clues have you seen that he's flirting with you? What's he doing? Well, he teases me a lot. He says stuff that he teases me a lot, and we we talk on the phone all the time and stuff like that. Okay. So you don't know whether he wants to get back together with you or not? I'm not sure. Do you want to get back together with him? Yes, I do very much. Okay. Here's what I would do for yourself. I would have a backup plan. You can definitely explore the relationship, see if it grows back together again with him, if he's a decent guy. But I wouldn't put all your eggs in one basket because he's not giving you any assurance. So I would still keep your eyes out and, you know, attend dances or different events and meet other men because you, you're you still so young that you don't want to end up marrying the first guy you meet. You want to get some experience under your belt, even if you do eventually end up with him. Thank you so much, Linnell, for your call. And uh, give me a call back and let me know how things go. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And coming up, we'll be talking about that nine-year-old kid who makes driving in a car very difficult and romantic relationships. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner on The Rational Basis of Happiness. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and co-author Dr. Edwin Locke. 
There are aspects of your appearance you cannot change, such as your height, being covered in freckles, or some changes due to aging. You simply need to accept things that you cannot change and work to change things that are within your control. Certain aspects of one's appearance are changeable with the help of technology. Plastic surgery, cosmetic procedures, and even drugstore products like at-home hair dye kits and teeth whiteners are available if you want to and can afford to use them. It's perfectly healthy to use technology to reasonably enhance your appearance. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com and you can buy The Selfish Path to Romance at amazon.com.